Hi everybody, Michael Stever here for Saturday Nightmares. We are at the landmark Jersey City Lowe's beautiful 100 plus year old movie palace. I'm sitting here with the beautiful, ultra talented, vivacious, fellow Sacramento native, Adrienne yes. Barbeau. Thank you so much for talking to me. I'm glad you didn't say 100 plus. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was tempting. <laughs> You're a thoroughbred. In what sense, Michael? The best sense. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I am so pleased to be talking with you. The, uh, <laughs> the six degrees uh, with us, it cracks me up because, uh, let's see, we're both from, from Sacramento. We both did productions at Best Little Whorehouse in Texas at Sacramento Music Circus. Mine with Julia Prowse and yours just a few years later in early 90s, right? Uh, you got me. I think it was the early 91, was see. it? It was bo before my boys were born, so yeah, 91 sounds about right. 91, 92, something like that. Wow. <laughs> And then, of course, I was fortunate enough to play Kanicki in a great production of Grease. Oh, were you? At Sharon Playhouse in Sharon, Connecticut. Okay, and I was Rizzo. Of course, Broadway. a hickey from Kanicki is like a Hallmark card. <laughs> and from Rizzo is even better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, wow, good grief. There's so many things I want to ask you. First off, you have a, a very, very, your roots are in theater. I started out doing musical comedy. I started out in uh, San Jose, California, uh, although I was born in Sacramento, and I actually took my first acting class in third grade at the Sacramento Music Circus, where, wow. where we were talking about. But uh, yeah, I started out doing musical comedy, and when I, right after I graduated high school, I went overseas and entertained the armed forces in what was known in those days as the Orient, now it's, uh, you know, uh -huh. Asia, Southeast Asia, and um, packed my bags when I was 19 and moved to New York because all I knew was stage, and so that was where you made your way. Now you talk about, uh, uh, Greece was not your first production on stage in New York. No, my first Broadway show was Fiddler on the Roof. I was a replacement, I played one of the, the daughters, um, in 1968, I think I went into that show. Uh, John Savage was in the show at the time, and many years later, I ended up doing uh, Carnival with John on uh, HBO. Bette Midler was playing the older daughter. Uh, who else? So you got to do that together. That yeah, yeah. Bette and I shared a dressing room for two years. I remember you, uh, hearing you talk about uh, being able to hear Donald Pleasance next door. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Donald was doing the man in the glass yeah. booth and his dressing room was right across the alley from ours and I used to go up to change clothes in between scenes in Fiddler and I could hear Donald screaming through the walls. And, and this is long before uh, Escape from New York? Long before Escape from New York, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, you have spent a lot of time very much as an activist, uh, you know, for women's rights, uh, even more recently for... Um, uh, for Prop 8 or against Prop 8. Yes, obviously. yes, against Prop 8, <laughs> against Prop 8. Uh, the, uh, the dramatic uh, reenactment of the Prop 8 trial I thought was really interesting. Oh, it's on YouTube. You see that? I haven't you know, seen it's, it it's yet. In, it's like in a zillion parts on YouTube. I just, I admire your, your, uh, your and Tess Harper's, you know, uh, willingness to just get in there and, and represent that in that interesting way. Well, it was nice to be able to, uh, to have an opportunity to, uh, to do something to help in that way, and I, it was, it, I, I, it was just a fascinating project, you know, just saying. But that's words. a really unique thing. That's not really been done, doing that kind no. of a dramatic reenactment, right? No, and <laughs> what interested me was, I mean, I w wish I had been in the room to actually see. As did many. <laughs> those those people saying those words because when we said those words, and we were just basically reading, you know, reading this not a script, we were reading the transcript. <laughs> it was, there was an awful lot of humor in what we, in the day that we did it. Yeah. I mean, I, it was, it's worth watching. I mean, it was like, what are these people talking about, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's, uh, it's great to see, you know, people in our industry banding together to, uh, you know, try to keep things as uh, even keel as possible. Yeah. And to, to speak out for what they believe. Whatever it is. The, um, you know, you worked uh, for a number of years with B. Arthur, and I don't know if you were as upset as a lot of people at her omission at the Oscars, yeah. but uh, I think, what's going on there at the uh, uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Society's office? I'm not a member. I don't, I've never been a member. Uh, 
lot of omissions though. Farrah Fawcett, Henry Gibson, Zelda you know, Rubinstein. I was just sitting here today and someone came up and asked about Dick Durock. Uh, from Swamp Thing. Dick was was Swamp Thing and it dawned on me, Dick passed this year and Dick was so well loved, I mean certainly by people who attend Saturday Nightmares and, and the horror conventions, but that's another name that should have been up there, you know, he's, uh, so I don't know, I don't know. You're, uh, you're, you're very, you, you make it known often that the horror genre is not your genre. <laughs> Well, and yeah, you've done so well. Asking me, you know, they say, "Well, what did you think of, uh, you know, the remake of the Fog?" I don't know. I didn't see it. I don't. I don't like to be scared. I like action adventure. I'm the first one there for James Bond or the Bourne Identity right. or you know. Uh, but I don't go to chick flicks either, so you know, I'm not the one to ask. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. Is your uh, is your aversion to being scared because you're You've been around, you know that there's lots of things in life to be scared of, like Prop 8. <laughs> is, uh, it, is it just because it doesn't, it just doesn't not, float your boat, it's just not it, your yeah, thing? It's not comfortable for me. I don't like, I don't... The first horror film that I remember seeing was a screening of Halloween before it ever aired, wow. or premiered. I of course, your then-husband, John Carpenter. John had just asked me to marry him, and so I went to the screening of, you know, my fiancé's film. Well, by the time the thing was over, poor John was black and blue because I kept going, ah, 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 you know? And, I mean, funny. my kids still make fun of me because somebody will walk in the room, and I'm like, you know, I don't like it. It's not, it's not fun for me, and I don't like to see blood and guts, and so... So I'm not the one to ask. <laughs> well, you, you're. I like to do them. They're wonderful. Yes, and you are. You know, you're. You're such a woman of substance, and I have such an appreciation for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I have such appreciation for longevity in the business, and you know, which is one of the reasons why it's very frustrating. You know, it seems like you know the young ones are dropping like flies, whether it's from a drug overdose or too much of this or too much of that, or you know, you. How, what do you credit to your? your groundwork uh, aside from I'm sure a great family upbringing to you know just being cognizant to stay away from certain things well you know I, I wrote a memoir a couple of years ago and I talk about my Armenian ancestors and and I've got a 96 year old aunt wow. who lives by herself cooks dinner for 25 of us every Thursday night every Halloween or every vacation or uh, holiday uh, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Aunt Ruby is making dinner for 40 of us and then she gets up the next morning and serves breakfast to Wow, that's, that's inspiring. Up. And that's just the way we were raised, you know. Um, so it's not special, it's just the way it's done. That's the way it's done. Do you find yourself trying to give advice to people? Do, do young people in the industry that are on their way up, do they seek advice from you in terms of you know, uh, understanding the pitfalls to fame, the understanding of, of, of not equating one's self-worth with how famous you are. I mean, these seem to be things that are lost on a lot of people. I rarely, I give advice if I'm asked, but you know, not too many people ask. I think, I think one of the things that I, that I honor about my career is that I did start in theater and uh, I and, and you know we had to work. We had to work hard, and we learned all of it. We learned what it was like to build the sets and to you know get the props on the on the stage. And so, and I, and I do see there are some people in the business who are there because they want to be stars instead of they want to create. And, and I think that, that's a difference. And sometimes those people don't last quite as long because their, their careers are built on, on celebrity. On sand. Uh, well, <laughs> or on celebrity as opposed to hard work and talent. Yeah. Well, I... So, learn uh, your craft if somebody wanted to ask me. You're a wonderful singer, too. I listened to some tracks from your album. And yes, of course, you know, of course, from singing Rizzo. But it's nice to see that you have kept that up and that you, uh, you know, you still got your singing chops. Uh, you know, I like, 
I like to create. I mean, I need to create, I guess. So if I'm not acting or I'm singing or in my later years, I ended up writing and... Uh, just Vampires of Hollywood. Yeah. Is it going to get made into a miniseries? Or a oh, film? We had a couple of offers that none of them, none of them were right. Uh, we'll see. I've got the the next. The sequel is coming out in September. Be called Love Bites. <laughs> I wanted to call it Friends for Dinner, but they thought that was a little too subtle for a vampire novel. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, you know, I haven't put up. I haven't hung up my. Uh, my acting chops either, even though I've worked predominantly as a filmmaker and cameraman for the last 10 years. Um, you know, I'm going to give you my card, so if you're okay. ever looking for actors... We're looking for, maybe we're looking for a vampire for <laughs> Love Bites or Vampires of Hollywood. Adrian Barbeau, thank you so much. Thank you. You are a wonderful woman. It's Thanks. a pleasure. <laughs>